Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Samuel's channel. Today we're building the BTF 1 to 100, 1 to 144 scale, uh, the G Defensor and the Flying Armor. I bought this off eBay for uh, 32 bucks US, and um, yeah, and this is. I heard this was better than the original uh, Bandai version of the G Defensor and the Flying Armor, so you know. Let's see how it goes. So uh, it doesn't have any kind of introduction on the box, so I can just straight unbox it. So, oh, the box is broke. That's not very fun. Ah, the box is pretty fragile, actually. All right, now uh, we have one, two, three, four. We have four packages and a very Simple instruction book down below. Hmm. Seems like we have to figure out uh, how to put on the G Defensor. They didn't give you instruction of how to put on the G Defensor. I guess we have to, you know, put it on by ourselves. But you know, that's fine. Uh, so we have two, two uh, marking. Ooh, the other one is here. So oh, oh, the markings in here is actually clipped in the. Uh, the paper here. Okay, we got two of it. So we got the marking here. Let's just take a quick look of the markings. So we have total of uh, 95 markings and it seems pretty detailed for me. So I assume it's gonna have some uh, good finish on the marking as well. Right now, so I opened up all the runners. Uh, it took a long time because the bag is actually very sloppy and it's very hard to kind of uh, open the back and so let's look at this. So this is the A runner. I uh, this is for the flying armor, right? Yeah, I think this is for the flying armor parts. So we got some thrusters, some basement. Oh, you can see though, there's actually a lot of pen lines on the side here. It's pretty good. So it's actually it's pretty detailed actually. Next, we got a C runner. I believe this is for the flying armor as well. As you can see, we got some wings, some base, some uh, the base jabber part. Then we got a E runner. This is for the. I believe this is some part for the flying armor and some part for the G defensor. I'm not really sure. Oh, maybe it's for maybe it's all for the flying armor. We got a a two X runner. This is for the G Defensor, definitely. And this is the wings, the missile pods, the wings. Yeah. We got J runner. Uh, the thrust. Uh, the the heat radiation system is the G Defensors. We got a D runner. Completely sure is for the flying armor because we have a large piece here. We got a F runner, uh, blue again, so it's for the missile parts and the G Defensor. Then we got a K runner, uh, it kind of works like a polycap, I assume. Uh, this is I runner, the I runner is some details for both of them. Then we got another I runner, exactly the same. We got a G runner, so we got some. Uh, action base part, uh, some tubes, some uh, I don't even understand which part is which. Oh, they, we got some head part of the flying armor and the GD Denser. And that's the last part, the B runner. Uh, we got a, oh, we have the gun now. Uh, we have the large mega rival and the uh, the bottom of the flying armor. I believe I, I don't. I'm not really sure actually. So anyway, uh, I'm very excited on see how the uh, third parties add-ons going. So, but I assume it's not going to fit on the RG Mark II because you know, as in the review I already said it, uh, the waist part is pretty sloppy. So I'm not sure if it, it's going to fit. But you know, we'll find it out in the review, and you know, I'll see you guys in the review.
Yo, welcome back to the review of the BTF's uh, flying armor and the GD bands. So this is in finishing of it. I honestly say need to say though, I am really happy about the finish of the flying armor, and not so happy about the G defenses. So first, uh, before I start the video, as usual, I just have to say though, third party kids sometimes have some uh, snapping problems. So, like sometimes the parts couldn't snap together, uh, like correctly because. It always leave a gap or some uh, connection problem. So, you know, just here to say, if you buy a third party kit, uh, you're gonna need to expect uh, to hurt your hands because you know you have to snap the parts very hard just to kind of combine it together. With the fly armor, no, but with the GD Vanza, yes, it it kind of hurting my fingers. Uh, let, let's be honest, like it does. Well, honestly though, uh, they do have some pace that is um, better than Bandai and some places not as well as Bandai so first uh, the snapping problem of course Bandai is going to be better at least I don't have to try to push it very hard just to get like a rival to get it on together but you know after you finish it it looks pretty cool and the detail on it is actually slightly more than Bandai and that is a very good thing and you know, let's start looking uh, the flying armor first. So uh, this kit is very nice though. They actually give you a very, uh, you know, a that. But I have to say though, this section base is kind of small. So, you know, if you want to like make some cool poses with it, uh, I don't really recommend to use this one. But this one for a standing pose is very good. So let's just start looking the flying armor first. So as you can see, we have a lot of markings and uh, we have a some clear colorless separation so we got some red parts some uh gray parts some actually some small detail color separations you can see it on there you can see some gray parts and uh white part if you look carefully and also the uh the in but oh by the way the instruction book didn't actually tell you how to put on the uh equipment actually I have to went on to Google and kind of figure it out from the original so here there's a spot here that you can put in the shield in the original uh, Bandai release uh, you don't have to remove the front to uh, put on the shield but on this version BTF version you have to remove the tip of the pen, uh, the plane here and then you actually and then you can snap on the shield uh, designing problem but you know I'm fine with it just remove a piece it's not gonna be a big deal and you know Looks pretty good though, actually. And now let's flip it to the back. Uh, the back is actually something that I really admire on. So each fence here is movable. The Bandai version was dead, couldn't move. Each piece here is separately movable. Oh, this one just stuck in it. Uh, you know what? Never mind. That one. That one. Screw that one. And um, you know each separate piece here is actually movable that is actually something very good and uh, it actually added a, a slight detail in there you can adjust the fence where do you want to go with it and you know uh, so you know let me just snap it on so uh, you know the action base is actually pretty simple all you have to do is just plug it in just give me a second and then you push it to the front there you go and now the whole flying armor uh, is been put on to the action base. All right, let's let's put a Mark II on this to to kind of test it. So first, as I just said before, uh, the shield problem. Uh, all you have to do is just remove the piece here. But uh, you know I can't really get it out, so I'm gonna borrow like a clip to kind of pull it out. So next, you can see this little piece here. All you have to do is just remove it. Then uh, the top of the shield here, we have a red part here. All you have to do is just facing the joint down there and then you just snap it on like this pretty simple right now now the shield is being clipped on to the uh, flying armor and now the mark 2 all we have to do is just uh, all we have to do is just turn down the feet and now all we have to do is just working like a clipping magic uh, all you have to do is just put it on like this let, let me try to make it pull let me try to make it like a quick pose so so overall, you should have something like this. Uh, it's not really stable, just for your information. It's not really stable, so you know, don't do anything crazy about it. But you know, basically, it will look like this, and you can make some cool poses with it. Uh, if you're a postmaster, I seriously not a postmaster. I'm very bad at making poses. 
on the Gunpla. You know, somebody should teach me. But you know, um, it's very good though. The flying armor is something that I really admire on this. Uh, but the GD Vancer, I will talk about it. I have something need to complain about that. <laughs> um, yeah, alright. You know, uh, so that's enough looking. So I'm gonna now skip to the flying, uh, the GD Vancer. Right, now time to look at the GD Vancer. So this is the finishing of it. You know, the markings on it, very nice, but you know, still have a lot of parts that you need to uh, repaint it yourself, just like the Bandai version. Uh, but the Bandai version, instead of you need to paint it, they do give you some stickers. But this one, uh, no way. So all you have to do is just repaint it. But you know, you can, you can have fun on repainting that. I am fine with it because I, I don't think I will put this armor on the onto the Mark II first. As I mentioned at the previous review, the Mark II's waist uh, part is very sloppy. So if I put this on, I don't think the Mark II can even stand on its own. So. Which is something that I should be considering about. And also, I forgot to put on the plane. I'm very sorry, I forgot to put on the plane. There we go, now it's perfect. So, let's talk about it. So, some parts that I am happy about. First, um, although you need to repaint it a lot of parts, but the but the panel line is actually very clear to see it this time. You can you can you do not need to use a some kind of tool to kind of you know uh increase the depth of the panel line this time you can just follow the panel instruction and the part that i actually very like about is the front of the plane it, uh the white part here is a separate piece it's not a sticker so which is a very good job about that and you know uh a lot of marking and you know let me just stop it for a second the part that I actually like the most is at the front here the front here the missile parts here uh, is different from the Bandai version the Bandai version didn't give you anything but this time they did give you the missiles color separation I'm absolutely very impressed about that like seriously I actually impressed about that uh, because I never thought that someone would actually do that but you know they did and well uh, but Mine's got a bango, as you can see at the bottom here. So the mega rifle is supposed to be close together, but is flipping out just like my uh, Sarah V gunner before the feet. Um, but you know, part couple parts you need to repaint the vents here, the uh, upper camera here, the back, the back, the thrusters here. Uh, a lot of part you need to repaint. But you know, if you if you want to add extra detail on it, you can repaint it, but I'm not going to put it on my Mark II because it's very sloppy. So now I'm going to show you how to put it on. Right, so now let's talk about it. So, uh, you know, before I snap it onto the Mark II, you have some slight adjustment that to do. So the down, the bottom here actually, uh, so first you need to remove the plane as usual. So let me just throw that away for a couple seconds. And, uh, you know, now all we have to do is just, there's a actual separate piece here. You can move it around and all you have to do, you just, gently remember gently pull down the uh connector because if you over use the force you actually break because the t the joint on this model is actually pretty tight so i don't recommend you to push it too hard then now all you have to do is just so now you rotate it so now all you have to do ooh exactly exactly just happened what i just said uh remember just don't pull it too hard because you know you might have some cracking sound like that so uh now all you have so now it's been done uh the instruction book didn't tell you though uh there's a load what's that uh never mind um so the instruction book didn't tell you there's a little connector here up uh, in the backpack but actually on the original uh instruction book uh, is the part that you put onto the Mark II. So let me flip it to the back. So as you can see now, uh, there's a, the little piece on the Mark II. The little piece, the little puck hole there. There used to be a uh, small piece in there to blocking it. and But now it's not existed anymore. So now all you have to do, you just face it and then you clip it on. And now you should have something like this, but you can clearly tell the Mark II couldn't stand on its own. You can see it's already bending back. So let me kind of adjust the post position for you all. So now this one should balance. Oh, so now it should balance like this. And the Mega Rival, um, 
low story. So I tried to put it onto the Mark II before I start the review, and it doesn't work. Uh, the movable hands clearly couldn't hold this uh, Mega Rival. The Mega Rival have a very, very uh, thick handle, and it actually didn't fit in the uh, movable van. Uh, it it doesn't stay on it. Like it just hold for like what two seconds and then fell off to the uh, fell off from the gunpla again. So I don't I'm don't really want to show you again because it's a very piss off moment. <laughs> And but on the original Bandai uh, version, they actually add a extra uh, handle here for you to clip it onto the uh, Mark II. But in this version, nope. So all you have to do is you can try to find a very, very uh, weird angle try to hold it. But I don't recommend you to do that because that's probably not gonna end up well. But you know you can have a look at it. It's pretty long though. It's actually let's do a short comparison. The actually the Mega Rival is as long. It's as, as tall as the whole Gunpla with the backpack on. It's a pretty long one. Oh, by the way, I broke it. Uh, remember, when you're building this rival, the rival don't have a really bad snapping problem. So uh, I try to use a bit much force to push it and then it end up breaking the whole rival. So uh, yeah, I super glue it so now you're not going to see it. But all I can say is uh, be careful when you're building this rival. The material on it is very very fragile. Once you push slightly harder, the whole the whole part just go and gone. So something that you need to watch out. And you know uh yeah so this is the end of the review hope you guys like it i try my best to hold the mega rival and look what look where they end up to it's completely impossible to hold it uh that's a designing problem but you know it's a third party kit so i'm not gonna complain about that but uh anyway it will look very cool if the mega rival actually have a separate hand to hold it instead of this in that, instead of relying the uh, uh, movable hand, but you know, I'm fine with it. Um, you know, I would say though, uh, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good kit to add on a Gundam Mark II. But as I just said, if you're gonna put this on, you're gonna have to hold the balance point very well because you know it's a very sloppy waist. Uh, it took me like a couple minutes just to let the Mark II look a bit normal while on the backpack and the gun. Well, let's not talk about the gun, okay? The, I try my best. And that's the best that I can came up with. Uh, you know, this is the end of the review. Hope you guys like this video. Be sure to drop a like down on my videos and subscribe to my channel as well. And remember to click the bell next to my uh, subscribing button. And you will get the latest video notification. And I will see you next time in another Gunplay review. Have a nice day. Goodbye.